right, so we're here for a no cooling call. And this is just a residential split, five ton unit. And it's for this uh, commercial application here, store. And he said it's warm in there. So outside temperature out here, we're somewhere around 80 degrees. Yeah, about 80 degrees outside. And fan's running. And I know these coils are clean because I cleaned them just a couple months ago. We're gonna go inside and take a look around. I already have a feeling I know what's going on. Here so far that, you know, it must not be doing too bad. So this is the air conditioner here. Let's see what we got going on. That 54 degree air. That ain't bad. It's about the same as our suction. So this is a 12 to 1 ratio on the uh, infrared. Now I believe we have another filter back here in the back and there's some in the ceilings. Out here we're at 83 degrees. 79 to 83, 81. It just depends on where you're at. 85 there. So go to our air here. We got 65 degree air. Yeah, 55. Yeah, 55 degree air there. Somewhere in that ballpark, so the filters are pretty dirty. So let's uh, let's get those yanked out and see if we can start getting some better volume coming out. I think what we got is just plain simple, not enough airflow. So like I said, when you check in here, it's 80 degrees, which is exactly what our generic old T87 electronic thermostat says. Yeah, I even swept these grills off because they were kind of dirty. The problem with this deal here is they didn't put a box above it, so these filters get dirty a lot quicker than what they need to. What they really need is about a four inch piece of sheet metal up there on top to raise it up higher so that you don't have a simple circle pattern. So you're losing all that area there in your filler. That's a common mistake that you'll run into. And here's the other one. This one's got even worse, but you can see that it's kind of pulling it in unequal areas. Just worked on that piece not too long ago. I think it was a pain in the butt. That trying to control that thing's pain in the butt. So we got that out of there. Let's see what we get for airflow. Check the filter in this furnace, which I don't generally like having that many filters because you're reducing airflow. This place has got a lot of dust. So there's our trunk line going back to the furnace. It's stuck board, quack, quack. But it ain't that bad up here. It's about 83 up here, so we're only about three degrees uh, warmer. The uh, lights are LED, so we don't have near the heat out of those that we had before. But we definitely got airflow issues. So we took the grill off of this. I've got better airflow now. I opened up the butterfly dampers there a little bit. When you have problems lining that up with the duct, the duct comes this direction and the butterflies are this way. It tends to stop the flow a lot worse. Let's check some of the other ones. Out here we've got windows. So there's a lot more infiltration. I'm gonna try to get this one opened up a little bit more. I'm not real thrilled with the way that is. So we'll open that. There we go, it's a little bit better. So the air's coming from this side here and it hits that damper, it slows it down big time. So we got pizza ovens right down there. But when you come up here on top, we've got two runs. You can see that silver flex over there and this silver here. There's not cold air coming out of that. It's definitely not cool. I mean, it's barely tempered. So I'm gonna see where that's coming from. Whatever that is, isn't uh, helping with our heat load. because it's definitely bringing the load in. It comes out here and goes above the ceiling. 
which we've got to go out here and see. You can see a little burger hidden back here. It's not running. Well, that's what those other ones were that were just blowing air that was being sucked off the ceiling. So, can't tell yet. So let's get this thing opened up. That's definitely uh, not helping us none. So it's a two-ton unit. Get in here and take a look. Let's see what, uh, what's going on. Looks like our contact is pulled in. Just need to see if we got voltage there. There we go. All right, so uh, got some helpers here. Um, what we ended up running into is we have thermal overload on the compressor. Capacitor checked out fine. Fan wasn't running because there's a fan cycle switch on it. So we jumped it, checked the pressure. We do have refrigerant in there. So I don't know if the switch is bad or if the motor's going out and that caused it, or is the compressor just junk? So we're gonna cool this thing down and uh, see if we can get it going. All right, so we've got the cool presser on there. Cool little invention. Go ahead. Let's see if we can cool this thing down. This does a pretty good job usually. All right, so now we're starting to cool her down. Now what we could do, since this uh, fan cycle control is not gonna turn on the fan, we could actually plug it in. And that way when it actually meets, uh, closes contacts from being on the overload, the uh, compressor will kick on and I'll know I'm done run the water. That way I don't have to run the water any longer than I need to. So let me try that. But I gotta stand right here with it, otherwise this fan will cause some problems. Yeah, check these wires here, see if they're okay. So I unplugged it. Let's see if uh, maybe we got one broke off. Maybe the start Mark out there and walk down. Too much effort. Then everybody knows he's got beer before he drives home, right? Yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> no, they don't care. No, not at all. trying to cool down that compressor. Went ahead and hooked a meter across the uh, common and run windings, unhook the fan, unhook the contact, and kill power. So when my meter beeps, I know I got it. So for right now, we're kind of out there just waiting. Uh, probably could check that filter there to see how bad it is. It's probably not very dirty. What we really need to do is get a five inch filter, stick it right here, and just let it do all the work instead of a little dinky one inch filters because it's just too long in between services for it to uh, survive. Yeah, even this kind of dirty. And it ain't so bad that it's completely blocking the light, but it surely isn't helping it none. Definitely need some new filters. All right, finally got it. So let's see what happens here. We got everything together. We're gonna go ahead and jump that fan there. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it don't go right off again. Even at 290 some odd pounds, 
was not coming on. So we got that fan control there, so we're gonna have to change that. Poor thing has multiple fender syndrome. All right, so we brushed this off for now. We'll have to come back with some uh, other filters. And uh, honestly, I just kind of feel as though this should be switched to a thicker one, but it's not like this just happened. This has been going on for years. So, now we gotta find the uh, air handler for the other one and check the coil. It's probably where it's leaking as what I'm assuming. We're gonna go ahead and wash this thing out a little more. We've already accumulated some cottonwood and stuff here and there. Get this done, and I air handlers up above, which I'll have to get over to that. Let me check the filter on it, see how it is. It's coming through pretty good. So we can do this one of two different ways. We can either oil everything up, get it ready to go, and get it on there and you lose a little bit. Or you can pump it down, which I'm feeling like pumping it down. I don't usually do it like this, but today's a special occasion, I guess. I just feel like it. So I go ahead and pump this thing down, kick it back on, and uh, get this back on. Because if you was to unhook the one there, there's no Schrader in that uh, port for the uh, fan cycle control. You're going to get blasted in the face with uh, refrigerant, which was very pleasant. So, let's go ahead. It should be stabilized by now. Looks like about is. Yep, it came on. Pump this tricky down. I'm going to put a new swivel T on there too, because that one there is all pinned up. I hacked it back so that just get a whole new one on there and be a lot better off. Also kind of test out our compressor valves at the same time while we're at it. Yeah, close enough for me. 18 pounds of pressure ain't no big deal. You definitely want to stay in a positive here. Another benefit of doing it like this is if you by chance have a stick to Schrader core or somebody decided to play Yankee Doodle Dandy with you and remove the Schrader core, you'll have a rude awakening. So it's a little safer to do it this way. You know, so it didn't take what? An extra minute? Just a little more reassurance. Kind of learn from your mistakes. I haven't had it happen too much, but. It can and does happen. So, got our swivel T in there. We ended up just uh, oiling it with some PoE oil. Got it on the back of the flares, which is kind of nice over the uh, nylog. Nylog, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it to the very back side of that flare joint, especially with that short little section there you've got. The oil just penetrates right into it. Got a little piece sleeved here. Got a nice little wire tie there. Everything should be tight and tidy. Got the control this time sideways, so it's a little easier to adjust. Obviously, once you adjust it, you won't be messing with it much after that, but it does make it easier all the same. So all we gotta do is open it back up, get this thing running, and then tweak it in to where we uh, can maintain, you know, a close to a liquid of 100 degrees area is what I try to shoot for. Obviously, you're trying to keep that suction up. I'll probably swing somewhere between 95 and 110, uh, 115. I just kind of watch combination of my suction and my head pressure. Don't want too much to the point where it never uh, stays running. You want it so that in mild temperatures, you know, and stuff like this, that the fan continues to run and doesn't cycle. And you don't want it to cycle too quickly to the point where it ends up taking out your bearings on your motor. There are little shorties out here. That's why I keep them around. So we got our gauge right there. Probably about 110, 115. Yeah. I came on about 125. Usually, I used to set them mainly for like 275 area. Uh, just seemed to be able to maintain that suction uh, saturation temperature above freezing. But that can cause a lot of issues. Just too much of a swing, and then it causes the TXV to have an erratic feeding back and forth, so we're gonna crank it down just a little bit. So we got it ready to go. 
and let's see where it goes in at now. That's a little better. We can crank it down just a little bit more. There we go. a little touch over. We'll tweak it one more time and I'm just going to go ahead and go from there. We've got our fan cycle switch going. It's not shutting off uh, while it's in this warmer weather, which is what you want. You don't want it cycling when it's 80 degrees out. So uh, just something to help uh, make up for this cooler outside. That way uh, you don't freeze up your evaporator. We've got everything buttoned back up, all the screws in there. We're not hitting anything on our lines there. We've got to spray it for leaks yet. Yeah, I noticed this. That ain't... Uh, the way it should be. This part out here is good, so now all we need to do is go in and check the filter on it and then scan that foil for leaks. I bought guarantee you. All right, up here we go. Gee, I wonder who put that there. Oh, oh yeah. That's makes it so easy to get in here and service. There we go. So see if we can dig our way through here. So let's crawl back here. We should be able to... We're just basically going across the cooler here. You can see the line sets from the uh, coolers and back here is the other unit which has got a collection of filters. There it is. All right, so we got the filter out and it's not looking so good. We're gonna shut this down. Hopefully they got breakers inside here. This one's cooling only, so they didn't, uh, they don't have any strips in there so there's no breakers. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull the fuse which will shut her down. Now we can get in there. We'll let it accumulate some uh, refrigerant as it leaks and uh, see if we can find this thing. We got one right here on the distributor tubes. I don't know if you've ever tried to braise that brass before, but you'll wish you never done it. So we definitely got a decent sized one there. And I believe we got some going on here. We can go down to our lower. Let's go to, let's just go to medium. Yeah, medium's going off. We ain't getting nothing on that one. Definitely getting it on that one. Nothing there, but we're definitely getting it on that. The coil's in really bad shape. They just need a new evaporator, um, which really be kind of stupid because it's R22. So if you go setting it up for R22, you might as well just convert it over to 410A, which means a whole new system. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not in the greatest of shapes. This thing's kind of... Kind of had a bad day. The air handler looks like it is a serial number 05. So 05. It's uh, 16 years old. I think it's had a good life in a commercial application that's lived in. We're gonna have to get a new filter. It's at least working. We're just gonna have to come back with some filters, which is a weird one. Uh, 16 by 24. It's because it's an air handler. They're usually a little bit weird. I'm sure there's probably more leaks in the middle of the coil, wouldn't surprise me. Found the leak, real surprised. Just let them know what they what I know and kind of go from there. All right, so we've got all the filters out here. That's two that was uh, the ones I found above the ceiling. And here's all of the 16 by 24s. So we got that in there. We're just gonna have to come back. I'm not gonna put a filter in. I don't have anything to even stick in there. I think it's gonna wrap things up. We've got a leak, obviously in the evaporator that we're gonna have to take care of. We had a bad fan control. We were low on refrigerant, obviously because we have a leak. And uh, the other unit had low airflow. So just another air conditioning issues, airflow or refrigerant, one or the other. So anyhow. That's gonna wrap it up, guys. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we will catch you on the next one.